Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Seafood. Today, you guys know I've been super looking forward to this one because, of course, I love my fighting games, I love my beat-em-ups, I love my martial arts movies, anything with Jackie Chan in, you know I am there. And of course, we did a load of coverage for Seafood at the end of last year when we had a chance to go hands-on with the preview build, but today, now the game is out, I want to put together a few handy beginner tips because, while this is a game all about fulfilling your martial arts fantasy, in order to get there, you need to practice because you will take some beatings to begin with, you will get kicked down, you will die, you will lose, but you will learn, and then of course when you get there, you will be a martial arts master. Hopefully. And of course, therein lies the reason behind this video, because these tips should help you on your way. So if you do find this helpful, a like would be super appreciated. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys plan to play this game. Let me know if you're playing it already. If so, what do you think of it? And do keep it locked because we've got more seafood coverage coming your way. First things first though, if you have been living under a rock, or maybe you haven't been watching anything on this game and you want to know what Sifu is, it is a beat-em-up action adventure game with a heavy emphasis on Pac-Mai style Kung Fu. You traverse the levels and try and take out the big bad awaiting you at the end of each location, but again, getting there is tough. So, how do you go about doing that? Well, firstly, your life needs structure. This game has a mechanic known as structure. It allows you to damage the enemy structure enough to take them down without having to whittle down their entire health bar. It's really satisfying and it makes you feel like a complete badass. Whilst the combat may seem a little bit sort of alchemy, this mechanic is basically straight out of Sekiro because of course you have a posture bar in that game, which again depletes when blocking. Now in order to negate this, you want to practice parrying moves perfectly or using them or avoiding them entirely to start replenishing your structure gauge. It's worth noting that guard break moves will absolutely ruin your meter so you want to avoid these as well as throws because as you have learned very well from fighting games you cannot block throws don't do it it doesn't work the experience is always painful and moves to the cost of a meter which when full will cause a guard break now use your surroundings the levels are designed in a way to be interactive to you and your enemies see a bottle dash it at someone's jaw need some space vault a table to give yourself some breathing room see a machete you get the idea. There's also a few handy upgrades in the skill tree to make this a little easier for you. Which brings us on to the next point. Upgrade your moves. There's some seriously amazing moves to unlock to help you on your playthrough and it's worth looking through each one of them to see which one suits your playstyle and allows you to wreak havoc on your sworn enemies. We'll go through these in a later video but to mention a few, inverted throw allows you to change positions with an enemy to get a better control of spacing. Environmental Mastery allows you to throw objects instantly towards enemies without having to pick them up. And Weapon Catch allows you to parry at the right moment to catch things with your bare hands. It is so incredibly satisfying. These moves can all be unlocked on runs for XP, but if you want your character to have these moves permanently, you'll need to purchase these abilities an additional five times on the same run to unlock them. Make sure you grab your rewards. Sifu kind of has like a minor roguelite element to it where during a run, on each level, you can visit these Jade Dragon statues. These will gift you with passives to help you through. Now, some of these are only available at certain ages, score or XP levels, but there are some really useful tools here to help you through the game. We found that leveling up your weapon damage, durability, focus and health regain did a lot of heavy lifting during our playthrough. If you die on a run to start an earlier level, you'll have to collect and choose these again. So find out which ones work best for you on the current level you're facing and go after those. Of course, in between stages, you want to practice in training. Whilst training does not have all the bells and whistles, it is a break from the hectic pace of campaign to allow you to practice and memorize your combos and your upgrades, to work out the best situations to use them, and not all combos are for damage. Some create space, some discombobulate the enemy, and some will disarm or ground opponents to give you a little bit more respite from the chaos. It's also worth noting it is okay to die in Sifu. It's safe to say that with games like Sifu, where death is built into the mechanics, you are going to die a lot. And that's okay. How does death work? Well, when you die in Sifu, your pendant allows you to literally resurrect from the dead, but at the cost of your age. This also comes with a slow trade-off where the older you are, the more damage you do, but also the less damage you can take, slowly transforming you into a glass cannon. Each death increases the death counter, which increases your age by the same amount of years as you progress through. The coins break after each use, so revives are not infinite, and your final death with no coins will lead to a game over. When you're dead, you get to keep all your permanent unlocks, and also all the shortcuts and progress you made on the detective board, but I'm going to be honest, this part makes no actual sense in terms of story. But if you've played Deathloop, you'll feel very familiar with the mechanics here. Armed with the knowledge of enemy placements, useful weapons and unlock shortcuts means you can run through levels easier, allowing you to save your precious aging life for another level instead. However, it's not okay to die in Sifu. 
Now hold on, I know we just said it's okay to die in Sifu, but hear me out. As you complete and unlock new levels, you'll notice that you can only enter these at the age you manage to reach that level. You might find that you'll reach a level later on where being so old is actually a detriment to your ability to progress because you can't take as many hits while still learning those levels. So it is still in your best interest to rerun earlier levels to try and get near perfect runs to allow you a better chance at succeeding later in later levels where being younger can work in your advantage. So while admittedly death is part of the game, it is one of those things that if you do take it too lightly, then uh, it will eventually catch up to you. Kind of like old age. So with that being said, those are a few handy tips to help you get started in the world of Sifu. Let us know in the comments down below if you guys have any questions. And if you guys haven't caught it already, check out this video for some more gameplay in action.